I want to bring in now Julia Thomas. She is Communications Director for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in uh, the Near East and uh, joins me now from Jordan's capital, from Amman. Juliet, great to have you with us. Thank you so much. I know that you were in Gaza earlier this week. You're now in Jordan. Um, we know that this has been one of the longest communications blackouts in Gaza. It's lasted, from my understanding, for almost a week. But how does this affect your work and the ability uh, for uh, first responders to assist people that need help urgently? Yes, uh, thanks uh, for having me. Indeed, uh, this uh, telecommunications blackout has um, so far been the longest since the war began. And it impacts all aspects of life. Uh, imagine not being able to place a simple phone call from one mobile device to another, uh, let alone very, very patchy internet, and including in our own uh, offices and facilities. So it's very hard to coordinate delivery of much needed and life-saving humanitarian assistance due to this um, blackout. Look, from my understanding as well, there's only six out of 22 UNRWA sites that are currently operational right now. Um, you were just there. I want you to tell me what you saw at your sites. Also, 1.4 million people, from what I'm understanding, are, are sheltering at UNRWA shelters right now. So, you know, the question is, is there enough food? Is there enough water? Is there medicine on the ground? And how are you ascertaining uh, and characterizing what you saw? Yeah, the six sites, by the way, just to be accurate, are the health facilities that under managers. However, across yeah. uh, the Gaza Strip, we have many, many more. Um, and yes, in our shelters, more than 150 of them uh, everywhere, including, but especially in the south, uh, they are overcrowded um, with people who continue to come into these shelters. I visited one of them, by the way, in the middle areas where people have recently moved. And because the school was way overcrowded, people have set up these little structures in what used to be the playground for children in the school. And I went into one of those structures. It's not really a tent. Um, it's a bit like a shack and 26 people were living in, in there. Some were sleeping on the concrete. Um, some didn't have a blanket. Um, there were children there on the same place. They were cooking. Sewage was overflowing. It had rained just before. People have not washed for weeks on end. Inhumane conditions. 